Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Jib Talks 2016. Very interesting, thought-provoking stuff that I think we are all going to be enjoying listening to. When I suppose somebody had to go first, and it seems that I got the short straw this uh, event. So um, I thought we'd start with a little bit of a warm-up. Let's kickstart the brain so that we can enjoy the rest of the day. Um, there's the title, Life Before the Board. Um, there is a reason why you have the bracket in the middle, and I'm sure you all, at some point in time, have done a close procedure. And you know, a close procedure is one of those assignments that you used to get in school where you had to fill in the missing word, okay? And of course, the missing word has got to have something to do with the context of it. So, um, you know, you could think in terms of, I could put surf, life before the surfboard, life before the snowboard, none of the two which I would recommend, really, could be quite dangerous, okay? Um, mostly, people tend to choose a word based on their own experience. So, um, perhaps my grandparents might have thought of putting life before the washboard. But of course, most people nowadays have never ever seen or heard of a washboard before. So, let me see, you are probably thinking to yourself, what word would I fit? It's down to your experience. Could I take a few minutes this morning to talk about the four words that come to my mind when I try and do that exercise? The first word that would come to my mind is that. That word comes to mind because of this. Can I just do a little survey? Has anybody ever been taught by one of those? Stood in front of it? Yeah. It's all right, don't be, don't be bashful, you know, I won't make fun of your age or anything. This was one of the most essential tools of my trade. It was so important that the first day that I walked into a school, the headmistress at the time decided that what I needed to do First of all, was learn blackboard writing. Two weeks stuck in a room learning how to do blackboard writing. And with that, and something that people used to call classroom control, you had the two essential survival skills with which you could march off to impart knowledge on children. And there we were. Off we went. I can't recall exactly when, but at some point in time, someone somewhere stuck in an office somewhere decided that that word was unsuitable. It was inappropriate because a certain sector of society might consider it offensive if you describe that as black. So it changed to chalk. One must not mention the B word. We talk about the chalkboard, and of course it was chalk. Really, really messy stuff. It would get everywhere. In your hair, up your nose, you know. I used to have the bad habit of leaning against the blackboard, chalkboard. And of course, I would end up with all the writing on the back of my shirt. And again, you know, things moved on. I suppose it had something to do with the environment, or perhaps, was it health and safety? Technology was coming on board. So, we moved school, and I got one of these nice, shiny, clean things with a set of markers which I was um, told I could write on. It was brilliant stuff. Um, they did say one thing. 
make sure you do not use a permanent marker. <laughs> Anybody who's ever been in a classroom knows that at certain points in time, things just develop into organized mayhem. You are teaching, some child puts up their, their hand and asks you to spell something. You grab whatever it is that is on the desk and you write this word. And as you write it, before you put it down, you realize that it says permanent marker. <laughs> oh dear, I have just ruined the latest gadgets have been given. Anyway, and I, I want to take you to, to one side a moment and talk about something else, which is the advent of technology. At some point in time between chalk and white, we got computers. <sighs> Wonderful tool. But they gave us one computer per class. One computer per class. Um, to give you an indication of what that experience was like, try to think of locking yourself in a room for about five hours a day with about 30 children and just one toy. and one toy that only one child can play with at a time, wants to give all the others something really, really boring and repetitive to do. It's not fun. <laughs> so, we got computers, again, more technology, more technology. We started to get printers, photocopiers, all this stuff, and, uh, you see, whiteboard, then things changed again. We got something which was called a smart board. This was a solution perhaps to just one computer and 30 children because you could project your images onto that. And I thought to myself, wow, this is amazing. Science fiction stuff. The possibilities are lim limitless. I can go on the internet. I can put videos. It was the first time in my life that I could actually write on this with my finger. Brilliant. By now, I wasn't planning lessons. I was preparing presentations. <sighs> Classroom control had somehow developed into managing the learning environment. <laughs> but again, at the end of the day, what you were expected to do was to go into a classroom and actually teach children, to get them to learn. So, with this smart board, and all this technology, I sat down one day and thought, I am going to prepare the best lesson in measuring maps in the history of geography. I prepared my presentation, my video, interactive games, whatever. Got to school, uh, started off by printing out the handout, took the hand out to a photocopier, put the photocopy in the scanner, and inevitably you see or hear this whirring noise, which means it's jammed. <laughs> this is not looking good. Disembowel the machine, retrieve a piece of paper, eventually get your handouts done 30 minutes later, rush off to class, laptop, books, etc. 
trunk, laptop on the desk, connect this cable to there, this jack to there, and this, switch it on, see this little thing going round and round and round. And when you look at the class, they're all grinning at you. And you think, Phew. they're all grinning. <laughs> Must be something wrong. You turn to the smart board, and it's dead. <laughs> and one of the kids will put up their hand and say, Sir, there's a power cut. <laughs> now, power cut to me means powerless. I can't do anything. I can't even write on it. And here, I am expected to do something. Very rapidly, I am losing control. And I'm going to have to manage in order to survive before I lose my sanity. And you may ask yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, what's the point of this? And to be honest, I don't know myself. <laughs> but it's really the story of how Black Old Man became Smart Old Man. And if there was one objective in this lesson, and somehow in the last 12 minutes I've managed to get your little brain to tick, then I have achieved the objective of my lesson. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.